Crossing Waterloo Bridge on his way to the restaurant where Gordon and Portia would be awaiting him, Albert looked back towards the great glass tower that he had just left. He was not a superstitious or a religious youth, but he could not help wondering what power or deity had blessed him with such outrageous good fortune. Like all seventeen-year-olds, his sense of guilt was greater than his sense of pride, and as a rule, if he expected anything from fate, it was more likely to be punishment than reward. Four and a half years ago, during his bar mitzvah, he had mentally crossed his fingers and thought scabrous, blasphemous thoughts throughout the ceremony. For weeks afterwards, he had been in dread of God's revenge. None had come. God had expressed his wrath by giving him good friends, sound health, and kindly parents. To crown it all, he was now to become a favourite in the court of King Cotter. He strode up the stone stairs of Christopher's two at a time. Portia and Gordon, nervously sipping mineral water at their table, didn't see him enter. He stopped a passing waiter and smiled broadly. "'Could you bring a bottle of champagne to that table over there? The best you've got?' "'Certainly, sir.' The waiter bowed and hurried away. "'Darling!' Portia beckoned him over. "'How was it? How did it go?' "'Blimey! Where do I start?' Feeling absurdly adult, Albert sat down at the table and told them of Simon Cotter's plans. "'So you see, it's the best of both worlds,' he said. "'Is that brilliant, or what?' A waiter approached their table with an ice bucket and a bottle of cristal. Gordon had been staring down at his cutlery with furrowed brows, as if listening for a catch somewhere in Albert's breathless recitation. He looked up now at the waiter. "'What's this? I ordered no champagne.' Uh, "'That was me, actually, Dad. I'll pay you back for it soon. I promise.' Portia squeezed Albert's hand. "'Quite right, too,' she said, looking anxiously at Gordon. "'This definitely calls for a celebration. Don't you think, darling?' Albert caught the pleading note in his mother's voice and leaned forward to add his own encouragement. "'Dad, I know it's all moving very quickly, but it's just great, don't you think? I mean, I can't lose either way.' Gordon smiled suddenly and put a hand to Albert's shoulder. "'Of course it's great, Albie. My years in the city have made me cautious, that's all. I, I'm sure everything's fine. I'm proud of you. Truly.' He said, Albert blushed slightly, he said that he thought you were a remarkable man, Dad. Did he? Is that so? Well, he's a remarkable man himself. He's buying a paper at the moment. Did you know that? The London Evening Press. You sure? There's been nothing about it in the financial pages. Absolutely. He said it was a complicated business, but it was time the standard had some competition. He's endowing a chair at Oxford, too. Never mind about all that, said Portia. Tell me what sort of man he is. Did he take his sunglasses off at any time? Do you think he's Jewish? From pictures, he looks impossibly dark and handsome. Does he dye his hair, do you think? For God's sake, Mum! Gordon and Albert caught each other's eyes and laughed with male solidarity. Well, these things are important, Portia said defensively. They tell you a lot about a person. He's read all your books anyway. He said so. What does that tell you about him? Father and son laughed again at Portia's flustered reaction. "'Let us drink to this paragon of taste and judgment," said Gordon, raising his glass. "'To Simon Cotter,' they chorused.